All right, when talking about combination of functions, and remember this is section 2.6 uh, of your book. Uh, first of all, we need to talk about the domain. We need to talk about finding, first of all, we need to find the domain of functions. Now, the functions that we're going to concentrate on for this part, though, the two functions will be polynomial functions and rational functions. All right, so those are the two types of functions that we're going to focus on in this part, polynomial functions and rational functions. Now you you graphed a polynomial function before. For example, y equals x plus 5 is a polynomial function. In fact, if, if you think about this, what is the graph of this polynomial function? It's a line. It's a line. And so if I were to graph this line using a t-table, and remember to graph a line, you need at least how many points? Yeah. Two. So let's say x is 0. If x is 0, what's my y value? 5. If x is, let's say, negative 2, what's my y value? Negative 2 plus 5 is what? 3. So when I plot those two points and draw my line, 0, 5 is here, and then negative 2, 3 is here, and so I'm going to draw the line, and this is the line I get, right? What is the domain of that, of that function? Very good. Remember we had done this, this idea? So you're going from negative infinity all the way to what? Positive. Positive infinity. So the domain of this function is negative infinity to infinity. Okay? Because I can use any number for x, right? Is, is there an x you think you cannot plug in? Okay, can I plug in any number for x and get a y value back? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. I can plug in a million. Am I going to get a y value back? Yeah, it'll be a million five. I can plug in negative 2,000.56. Am I going to get a y value back? Yes. Another polynomial function that you graphed was this. That was another one that you graphed. What is the graph of this polynomial function? It's a parabola. Do you remember where the, where the vertex is located? No, not the origin. If it was y equals x squared, it would be at the origin. All right, now the graph of parabola, you need at least five points. So if I let x be 0, what's my y value? What's 0 squared plus 1? One? 1. 1. If I let x be 1, what's 1 squared plus 1? Two. 2. If I let x equal negative 1, now remember negative 1, so when I do that one, make sure you put that in parentheses like this, what's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. If x is 2, what's 2 squared plus 1? 5. If x is negative 2, remember for the negative x values, make sure you put parentheses. I still get what? 5. Remember, there's always some symmetry with respect to these quadratic functions. And so if I plot that point, uh, those points, I get 0, 1 is here, 1, 2 is here, negative 1, 2 is here, 2, 5, let's say, is here, negative 2, 5 is here, and I get something that looks like this. That's the graph of this quadratic function. So the vertex is located where? What is that point? 
Guys, what's this point right here? Zero, one. So the vertex is zero, one. That's your vertex right here. But what's the domain of this polynomial function? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity. I can, in fact, you didn't even have to look at the graph. You could have just thought about what you were doing here. Could I use any number for x? Yes. Yeah. I can use any number for x. I can use decimals. I can use positive uh, rational numbers or um, irrational numbers. Any real number I can plug in. So what's the domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Now remember, a polynomial, a polynomial function, a polynomial function A polynomial function, each term, each term has this form. It's some number times x to a power. Some number times x to a power. Or the term can be a constant, which can be translated to this as well. So, so if, if I look at at ax to the p power. So if I look, if I look at this one right here, what's a? One. one. What is the power? My exponent. One. one. P right here. Your exponent has to be a whole number. Your exponent has to be a whole number. What are your whole numbers? What's the smallest whole number? Oh, no. Zero. Your whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Those are your whole numbers. Knows you see anything negative here? No. A polynomial function, your exponent can never be negative. Your exponent must be what kind of number? A whole number. So here's the question. Is this is this a polynomial function? Why well, didn't even write it? You said yes. I was I was looking at your area. <laughs> I was looking back there. <laughs> All right, is this a polynomial function? Um, f of x equal 5x squared minus 3x plus 2. But, but is a quadratic function, this is quadratic, I agree with that, but is a, is a quadratic function a polynomial function? Yeah. Yes. Every term has this form. So we just talked about that. We said, remember we talked about this? We said uh, all these were polynomial functions. And if you look at the domain of these polynomial functions, what do you see so far? What's the domain? Negative, Negative infinity, infinity, all real numbers. I can use any real number for x, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But do you agree this is a polynomial function? Yes. Okay, so that is, yes. Two, g of x equal negative um, negative x to the eighth power plus seven x to the fourth power minus three x plus two. Yeah. Every term, every term has this form. My really, you just need to look at your exponents because because to be honest with you, you you could have like three sevenths as your coefficient can be a fraction is what I'm saying. It can be any a can be any number. It can be negative, positive, decimals. Fractions is just that your exponent has to be what kind of number? A whole, a whole number. So that one is a polynomial function. What about number three? Let we'll me put number three here. Um, f of x is still a function, but the question is is it a polynomial function? Um, 7x to the third power plus 2x squared minus 3x to the negative 1 
let's just I'm running out of room so just leave it like that no that's not a polynomial function why because this exponent right here is negative so this is not just not a polynomial function okay all right so you have an idea what polynomial functions are right mm -hmm. what they look like okay all right now Okay, so I gave you a handout that looks like this. And at the title, it says Examples of Polynomial Functions. So if you look at the first one, the first one, notice that this is x squared plus 3x plus 1. That's a quadratic, right? right yeah. And you notice the graph is, is a parabola. What's the domain? Ba based on the, the graph, what do you think the domain of this, this uh, polynomial function is? Negative infinity, positive infinity. Positive infinity, positive infinity. So it's all real numbers. This line right here, this horizontal line, even though you don't see a variable, it's still considered a polynomial function. What's the domain? Negative, negative infinity to positive infinity. This, now this right here, where, uh, where you see the largest exponent being 3, that's called a cubic function. That's called a cubic function. Because the largest exponent is 3. So that's called a cubic function. And the graph for that one looks like this. Looks like this. And, and just assume that those are arrows right here. Now remember, to find the domain, you go along the x-axis. So I'm going along the x-axis. Here's the question. What's the domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. That's the domain. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Here's another cubic function. Why is that called a cubic function? The largest exponent is 3. That graph looks like this. Again, these are arrows. Remember, it just keeps on going like this. Always remember that. So to find the domain, you go along the x-axis. When I go along the x-axis, is there any x value I cannot plug in? No, I can plug in any x value. So what's the domain? Negative infinity to infinity. Here's another polynomial function. Now, if the degree here, or the largest exponent is 4, that's called a quartic function. Down here, a quartic function. You don't have to know the names of the functions. But what I'm interested in is, is for you to tell me what the domain of this polynomial function is. Yeah, you know, it looks like it's going straight down, but it's not. Otherwise, it would not be a function anymore. Okay, but it's, it's going down like this. So it's negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. When I said straight down, what I meant was a, a vertical line. Um, so if you look at this one right here, this quintic function of degree 5, what's the domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. So all of these were polynomial functions, right? What did you notice about the domain for each of those as we went through this? All real numbers. So the domain, the domain of a polynomial function, all polynomial functions, the domain of all polynomial functions is all real numbers. I can plug in number for x, and, and I'll be able to get a y value back. In interval notation, what does that look like? Uh, negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. So if you have a polynomial function, you don't have any x values you can exclude. You can use any x value. None of them are excluded. OK? All right, so that's polynomial functions. Now let's talk about a rational function. Now, you dealt with rational functions before, but they were in terms of a rational expression. So let's kind of review something. And you may remember this from last semester, and we may have talked about this. I just can't remember sometimes what we've done or didn't do. But last semester, I know you did this last semester because it is in, in that course. Uh, let's say we had x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. 
Now, this is not a polynomial function because for one thing, a polynomial function, you cannot have a variable in the denominator. No variables in the denominator. You see a variable in the denominator, right? But if I ask you this, if I, if I just look at the numerator, is this numerator a polynomial expression? Yes. If I look at the denominator, is this denominator a polynomial expression? Yes. A rational function, a rational function has this form. You get, and we're going to use function notation. It has this form. It's where you have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So a rational function is a function where the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is a polynomial. Okay? Last semester, you dealt with rational expressions. You can never divide by what number? Zero. You can never divide by zero. Eight divided by zero is undefined. If you put that in your calculator, you get um, a domain error probably, or I'm not sure what your calculator will say, but it will probably say error, domain error. You cannot divide by zero. That's undefined. So what you did last semester was this. You found your excluded values. In fact, on test one, when we solved a rational <laughs> equation, we had rational equation test one, remember? No. Okay, so, so when talking about finding the domain of a rational function, you need to look, first of all, at your denominator. What makes this rational expression right here what makes that denominator zero? Okay, so so this this rational expression is undefined when x equal what? Two. Y'all agree? Okay. All right. So we when on the on test one on test one when you solve this rational equation. When you solve this rational equation on test one, you found your restrictions. And so, so we said right here that x cannot be 3 and negative 3. When we talk about this in terms of, of a rational function, you're going to see how to write your domain. Okay? So, so I can use any number for x except what here? 2. Two. That's, that's your, uh, the idea of a domain. So for this domain here, I can use any number for x except what? 2. Okay? Because 2 makes my denominator what? 0. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and write this in terms of a rational function. So let's look at this. All right, so we'll start with the simple one. So now I wrote it, instead of a rational expression, I wrote it as a rational function. So let's talk about finding the domain of a rational function. If you remember how to solve a rational equation, that should be no issue. Is there like an assumption here with the reciprocal? It does not. It does not. All right. Um, so, so to find to find the domain of a rational function is the same way you did for finding the restrictions when you solve the rational equation. What makes the denominator zero? What makes the denominator zero? Two. So I know that I can't, so x cannot equal what? Two. Okay? So x can be any other number except what? Two. Now I want you to understand what's happening. So basically when you find your, your, your domain, and my domain is, is, is any real number except what? Two. What that means is this, if you were to graph this, and you're going to, you're going to graph this, I'm hoping we have time, but we don't, we're running out of classes. Um, when we graph this, you're going, to, you're going to use a T table for the most part, except you won't be able to use what number for X? Two. Two. So I can, 
So for example, if I let x be 5, if I let x be 5, will I get a y value? Yes. yes. 5 plus 5 is 10. 5 minus 2 is 3. I get a y value. If x is negative 2, do I get a y value? Yes. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Negative 2 and a negative 2 is negative 4. No matter what number I use for x, I could use decimals, I can use square roots, I can use any real number except what? 2. All right, now, the directions, though, if you look at your worksheets dealing with this, the direction says write it as an interval. Write as an interval. So here's the way to think about this. What I would do is this. On the number line, in your mind, here's 2. I cannot use 2, right? right? So I can use any other number for x except what? 2. So I put 2 on the number line, and I crossed it out. So that x divides the number line into how many intervals? Yeah. Two. two. So you go from negative infinity to two. two, which is not included. So hence the parentheses. Union, and then from two to what? Two. Positive. Positive infinity. So that's how you write your domain. So basically what you found was this. You found that I can use any number for x except what? Two. two. You're supposed to have two intervals though, right? right? If for some reason you forget the union, I'm not going to take off any points, but you better have how many intervals? Two. two. Okay? All right, so let's do this example. f of x equal negative 2 divided by 2x minus 3. First of all, is this a rational function? Yes. yes. Because the numerator is a polynomial. A polynomial can be a constant. And your denominator is a polynomial. So this is a rational function. If I want to find the domain, i got to find out what my restrictions are for this rational expression. And to determine what the restrictions are, you look at what part of this rational expression. The denominator. Do you look at the numerator at all? No. Yeah. You just look at the denominator. And so and so basically you just take the denominator and you find out where's that zero, right? Just set equal to zero. So notice what kind of equation is this right here that I'm pointing to? Linear. So you add three to both sides to so get two x equal three, right? Yep. And then divide by two. Then divide by two, you found x to be three halves. So what I found was that was that with regards to substituting any value for x, I can substitute any value for x except what? Three halves. Okay? So my domain, in words, my domain would be any real number except what? Three halves. But the direction is, is going to say write this as an interval. I'm sorry, yeah, as an interval. Write the domain as an interval. So in your mind, you have your number line. And so these are all the x values in my number line. I can use any, all of them except which one? Three, three halves. So I put three halves there and I cross it out. And notice three halves divides the number line into how many intervals? Mm -hmm. Two. So there are two parts. So you go from negative infinity to three halves. Parentheses though, right? Because right. if you put bracket, that means that, that, that three halves, I can use three halves when I plug in and I can't because that makes the denominator zero. So it's parentheses union and then what? Three halves. Three halves to infinity. Okay? And so and so when I look at this one, let so let's write this one as number one right here. Let's put this as number one. Then this is number two. And let's look at number three. So number three Suppose I had this, g of x equal x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 49. x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 49. Is that, is that a rational function? Yes, because the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is a polynomial, right? 
And so if I want to find the domain of this rational function, all I need to do is find out what values for x makes the denominator 0. Well, what is your denominator, first of all? x squared minus 9. I'm sorry, x squared minus 49. Thank you. And I want to find out where that's 0, right? OK, now don't make it difficult. You had this on previous tests before. What kind of function, what kind of equation is this? Quadratic. And what do you notice about x squared minus 49? It's a difference of two squares. Or if you want to, could if you wanted to, do you see do you see the, the, the term x anywhere? You see an x squared, do you see the x? I don't see an x, I see an x squared. The point I'm trying to make is that is that if you want to use a square root property, couldn't you use a square root property? Oh, yeah. yeah, you can use a square root property here. So there are two approaches you can take, guys. You can factor. And what, what are these factors? X plus 7. And then, and then to solve this equation, we use a zero factor property. So you set each one equal to zero. And so... So when I solve each of these, what's x over here? Negative. Positive 7. What's x over here? Negative. Negative 7. So I found my excluded values for x. How many values of x can I not use? Yeah. 2. All right, before I go any further, though, with the domain idea, let me remind you about something. There's, there's no x term. There's no first degree term. I see a second degree term for x, but no first degree term. So if I wanted to, I could have brought the 49 over. And then do what to both sides? Square root. Don't forget, though, when you take the square root of both sides, you get a plus and a what? A minus. So the x and the x squared undo each other. So you get x. I meant the square and the square root, excuse me. The square and the square root undo each other. So you get x equal plus or minus what? 7. Square root of 49, 7. All right? So, how many intervals, how many intervals will I use this time? So I used two before. You think I'm going to use two again? Well, see, see how some of you are not quite sure, right? So let's, let's do what, what we did before. I put 7 and negative 7 on the number line. Okay, that's, that's the way you need to do this. Put it in the number line. But put them in order. What goes here? And what goes here? And I cross them out. How many parts do you see? Three. There are three parts. So my domain, my domain will be from negative infinity to what? Negative seven with parentheses, union, and then what? Parentheses, union, and then what? Seven to infinity. That's your domain. So basically what you found was this. I can use any number for x except what? Negative seven and positive seven. That's what that says. Okay, number four. Suppose you had k of x equal five divided by x plus 6 times 2x plus, uh, let's say, 9. Uh-huh. Any time you have two exclusions, notice when I put two in the number line, I cross them out, you get three parts, one, two, three. All right. So, so her question is this. I'm gonna, let, let's look at number five first. Let's do number five first. Hold on. Hold on. So her question basically said this. Anytime you have a, a, a quadratic, are you going to have three intervals? That's not necessarily true. Okay? Let me come back to that. But she's trying to relate... She's trying to relate the, I guess, the exponent with, with, a with a pattern, I guess. You can't look at it that way. You got to look at your, how many restrictions there are. 
So if I look at number 5 and I say h of x is 2 divided by x plus 5 squared, okay? Do y'all see that the denominator is a quadratic expression? Because x plus 5 times x plus 5, when I multiply it out, don't I get it x squared? Yes. Okay. But it's already factored, right? Isn't this already factored? So all I got to do is find out where is x plus 5 equal to what? Zero. Do y'all do y'all see that this right here is the same thing as saying 2 divided by x plus 5 times x plus 5. Okay? When I go back, when I when I go back over here, x minus 7, x plus 7 were two different factors. And so you ended up with two different excluded values for x. Here, x plus 5 and x plus 5 are the same factor. You just use one of them, set equal to 0. So what's x over here? Negative 5. So how many intervals will you have? Two. 2. So don't look at the exponent to determine how many intervals you're going to end up with. You got to look at how many excluded values there are. So, so over here, I can't use negative 5, so my domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 5, union, and then negative 5 to infinity. All right, let's go back to number 4. I'm going to ask this question about number 4 before we even go on. Is this a polynomial function? Uh, uh, um, is this a rational function? Excuse me. Yes. yes. The numerator is a polynomial, but how do you know that the denominator is a polynomial expression? Because if you follow this out, if you follow it out, what's x times 2x? 2x squared. What's the outer? And what's the inner? So I get um, 21x, is that right? And then what's 9 times 6? 54. So this right here is this, right? Yes or no? Yes. So isn't this a polynomial? All right. It's just that this has been factored for you. It's been factored for you. So all you do is find out for each of those factors what makes it 0. So x plus 6 is a factor. What makes that one 0? Negative 6. So all great? So that's one of my excluded values. The other one, 2x plus 9 equals 0. So 2x has to equal what? So what's the other excluded value? Negative 9 halves? Okay. So I have how many excluded values for the domain? 2. So how many intervals will I have? Three. So your number line, use a number line. Now, remember, you got to put them in order, right? So those are both negatives. So sometimes those negative numbers confuse people. Negative six is easy to figure out where it's located. But what about negative nine halves? What is that? So it's negative 4.5? Okay, negative four and a half. So in terms of the order, do I put negative 4.5 first or negative 6 first? Negative six. negative 6, good. Negative 6 is smaller than negative 9 halves. And you can write as negative 4.5. So I can't use those. So my domain, I can use every number, every x value except these two. So the domain will be from negative infinity to negative 6, union, negative 6 to negative 9 halves, union, negative 9 halves to what? Infinity. Okay? Okay, so um, all these are rational, are rational functions. Y'all agree? Because if, if 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 you look if you look at the at the the function the uh, the letters the variables you agree that's a rational function right here yes. 
Okay, what can x be? Just look at it and tell me what you think x cannot be. x cannot be what here? The very first one I'm pointing to. Negative 1 half. Good. Negative 1 half. What do you notice in terms of the graph? Remember that for the domain, we look. if you look at the graph, you're going from negative infinity, and you may say, well, I'm going from negative infinity to positive infinity, but that's not true because not all the x values are part of the domain. You see this vertical, uh, this dotted line, this vertical dotted line? That's going to mean something soon when, you, when we start graphing these. Where does that vertical line cross the x-axis? So negative, negative one-half, right? Isn't that what we just said x cannot be? So you're going to learn quick, and this is, for the most part, always true, except now in here, we're not going to talk about this, but there are situations where you don't get a dotted vertical line. And by the way, that dotted vertical line, you don't have to write this down, but the dotted vertical line is called a vertical asymptote. Don't worry about the words just yet. But sometimes there will be a hole in the graph, which we won't talk about in here. We'll just be dealing with this vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. So when we found the restrictions, guys, when we found the restrictions for us, for our course, when we graph these, the restrictions tell us where the vertical asymptotes are. So notice, notice, what makes this rational function undefined when x is what? Yeah. Zero. So notice, x equals zero is your y-axis. See how the graph goes towards the y-axis, these little parts? Yeah. All right. Over here, what makes this rational function undefined when x is what? Yeah. Two. What do you notice here at two? The There's a vertical asymptote. So your domain is going to be from negative infinity to two, and then from two to what? Infinity. infinity. Over here, over here, Notice how many factors are in your denominator? Two. So x cannot equal two things. What are they? Negative one and what? Two. Notice at negative one, what do you see? A vertical asymptote. At two, what do you see? A vertical asymptote. So in terms of my domain, you're saying, in terms of your domain, your x values, I can use any x value from negative infinity to what? negative 1, and then from negative 1 to what? Positive 2, and then 2 from where? Infinity. That's what your graph looks like. So when we graph these, we're going to come back and talk about that domain of these rational functions and what they mean in terms of the graph. So those are your vertical asymptotes that you're doing. Okay? All right, so I just wanted to show you what the graphs of these rational functions will look like. And I wanted to show you that your excluded values for us, the excluded values are actually going to be what, what idea? Vertical asymptotes. Okay? All right. So that takes care of that first part.